Well, many say that we live in a concrete jungle. Whether we're in the office, we're at home, we're in a school, we're surrounded by structures. And one key element of these structures is cement. This is The Trading Bell. My name is Malika Kazia. Welcome. And today, I'm at the headquarters of Bamburi Cement in Nairobi. I want to talk to Sadiq Hassani, the CEO of Bamburi Cement, to talk to us a little bit about the figures and the numbers coming out of the company, but not just that. What does he expect in terms of the economic climate? Let's find out. Sadiq Hassani is the current CEO of Bamburi Cement. In the past, Sadiq worked as an auditor and strategy consultant in Arthur Anderson Casablanca before joining Lafarge Morocco in 2000. While in Lafarge Morocco, he held several positions including control manager, CEO of Lafarge Gypsum Morocco, purchasing and logistics director and marketing and strategy director. From 2015, Sadiq has been the Lafarge Holsim Head of Growth and Innovation for Middle East and Africa. He was appointed to the board as Managing Director on the 9th of February 2018. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us, Sadiq, this uh, episode of The Trading Bell. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. Now, if we talk about Bamburi Cement, let's just get right into the conversation with exactly, um, you know, appraising us on the operations in the region of Bamburi Cement, what you aim to do, and how you are seeing 2019 progressing thus far. Well, um, Bamburi Cement is um, present in uh, Kenya and Uganda uh, as a group. Um, and we have uh, uh, two plants in Kenya and two plants in Uganda. Um, we are in this area for many years uh, now. Uh, 2019 um, started relatively well. Uh, it depends, of course, on the market dynamics. Uh, we are quite optimistic mm -hmm. based on the uh, uh, programs and initiatives uh, which were uh, launched by the government in order to boost the uh, global activity in, uh, in the countries. Okay, now let's let's get to the numbers because you know the past couple of years we have seen the earnings and the revenues dip by a great percentage. If we look at 2017, we saw that as compared to 2016, the earnings dropped by 67 percent. In December last year, you issued a profit warning. So, where do we stand when it comes to the numbers, and why do you think such substantial drops are being noticed? So, in 2018. Um, there were some external factors. Coal price increased as well, and the fuel. Um, and we saw also, as we uh, import part of our clinker, uh, the clinker cost increasing as well. So this has affected a lot our operations in 2018. But on the positive side, uh, we were able to uh, uh, reinforce our uh, commercial footprint in Kenya, um, through uh, an increased uh, market share, uh, but also uh, a more uh, uh, or a wider range of yes. products mm -hmm. that we uh, uh, launched in 2018. Yes. Okay, so as you, as you mentioned the products, just, you know, this month you did urge the government to use uh, hydraulic road binders, and that's opposed yeah. to the um, ordinary Portland cement. So it, it goes back, of course, if we, you know, go back to 2014 when the government, through Kenya Rural Roads Authority, did challenge some of the cement makers to come up with more cost-friendly options. So, you know, if, you, if we break that down, how does this hydraulic road binder, um, you know, soil stabilizer instead of the um, OPC, uh, how, how is that going to benefit the road, um, you know, uses? How is it going to make it better? Yeah. So when we launch a product, uh, we need first to look at the application itself and how the product can fit that application. So for roads, the uh, OPC is not the best solution mm -hmm for road stabilization. The, the, the hydraulic road binder, which is commonly used in uh, all the other countries, mainly in, in Europe and, 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 uh, and America and, and uh, Asia as well, is more convenient for roads, based on the intrinsic characteristics of the product. Okay. Uh, now, back to the costs. Mm. Uh, first, we need to look at the global costs, not only the specific cost of 
uh, given product. When you look at the global cost, what a road binder will uh, save as, as cost? First, it will save a lot of transport costs to bring uh, aggregates from far to the site. This is one of the savings. Second, it will accelerate also the road construction. This is also a saving to the road contractor. Now, on the product itself, uh, of course, there is not only one road binder, so it depends on the soil itself. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we adapt the road binder. So in some cases, it can be much cheaper. In others, because of uh, uh, the characteristics of that soil, it can be a bit more expensive. But globally, globally, the cost of the road will be cheaper. Okay, so what, what progress can you appraise us with, with regards to how far the government is in uptaking this product now? Well, we had this uh, conference just one month ago, and I think that there is a, a strong willingness to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, us, as Bamburi, we are ready. The product is, uh, from the technical uh, perspective, is ready to be launched. So as soon as um, the, uh, uh, let's say, the, the uh, guidelines are, the new guidelines are issued, we'll be ready to launch it. Okay, so um, of course now you're talking about the product range diversifying and the options that are out there, but going back to some of the challenges that you're facing in terms of, uh, let's say, costs of energy and things like that that you have cited as leading yeah. to the decrease in earnings, how are you tackling them in this year and trying to make sure that they do not affect the company's margins as much? So there are uh, two ways. Um, the first one is, let's say, the external uh, factors, but we shouldn't rely too much on, on them. They can be positive or negative depending on the global uh, environment. But internally, we have uh, to work on our own uh, uh, optimization in, in the production. So we need to work on the efficiency of our uh, operations, the efficiency of our equipment, equipments, uh, and how to consume less uh, uh, energy to produce one ton of cement. So this is what we are working on, and we are uh, uh, convinced and very optimistic that in 2019, it will bring a lot of value. So essentially become more energy efficient as well. And you know, when, when we talk about a lot of companies and their progress towards the three Ps, people, planet, and profits, a lot of people who are more cognizant of the fact that we need to also be aware of our carbon footprint, of how, how we're affecting the environment. And what kind of initiatives is Bamburi Cement then involved in in order to prevent um, degrading the environment further or even just better it in general? Well, you know, uh, I think that Bamburi is uh, a pioneer mm. in uh, protecting the environment. I think that uh, all Kenyan and maybe men, uh, a lot of tourists, they know Haller Park, which is uh, 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 a unique uh, quarry rehabilitation uh, done that way, creating or recreating the full ecosystem in an old quarry. Yes. Uh, second is... Uh, the way we use a lot of waste, mm -hmm. uh, and instead of uh, moving that waste into uh, landfill, we are using them in our, uh, in our kilns. You know that a cement kiln, um, the temperature goes up to 1400 degrees, and we can burn a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, waste. Okay. So this is also one of the initiatives that we want to accelerate mm -hmm. uh, in order also to uh, to protect the environment. Okay. So aside from now the environment in general, but toward more toward the economic environment of the country, you know, the World Bank has cited that manufacturing, the growth of manufacturing within Kenya has slowed down. Um, it's, it's gone up to 2.7% in 2018, but that's still much, much not where we were between 2013 and 2016, which was at like 3.6%. So do you think that this decline in manufacturing, and of course it's also tied to the Big Four agenda, has directly impacted the consumption of cement as well? Yes, I mean, we've seen in the last two years, 2017 and 2018, a drop yes. on cement consumption. Uh, now, as I said, we are looking forward to 2019 and, uh, and 2020 um, uh, in a more optimistic way. So all these initiatives launched by governments mm. uh, through the Big Four agenda will drive uh, the growth uh, on, in the industry. Of course, 
uh, I think that um, this is a global trend to see uh, urbanization. Mm -hmm. uh, so according to the UN, the urbanization rate will move from 26, 27 um, in 2017 to more than 44 uh, percent by 2050. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that um, we will need to build roads uh, in order to connect the, the cities. We will need to build uh, dams because the growth of population which will need uh, of course more food and then more irrigation and then uh, the dams will, uh, will, will come into, uh, um, in, into that. Um, we will need also, because of the scarcity of land, because of the urbanization, to build more high-rise buildings. Uh, and this will drive also uh, probably the, uh, the, uh, the growth of, of the industry. So these are okay. kind of drivers uh, that will, uh, let's say, uh, uh, build uh, uh, the momentum in, in the cement industry. Okay, so and as we even talk about the Big Four agenda and manufacturing being key, one of those uh, pillars, what do you think the government still needs to focus on in order to bolster and to keep on boosting manufacturing within the country? We need to be in Kenya uh, cost effective mm. uh, so that we don't rely on imported goods but we uh, produce them in Kenya. So I think this is the first one. We talked about power costs. Yes. Power costs in Kenya is one of the highest in, the re in, in, in Africa, mm -hmm. the whole Africa. And this is uh, uh, one of the weaknesses uh, today that we see. Uh, and this can be a good lever in order to be more competitive. Second, uh, all those initiatives, uh, because the manufacturing, it has to, um, to come with a specific need. Uh, so we talked about affordable housing. This is uh, yes. a specific need and we see uh, that the trends will evolve uh, from a traditional way to a more mechanized mm -hmm. way uh, through uh, using a ready mix to precast industry as well. This will also drive uh, the manufacturing sector. Uh, this is just about, let's say, the uh, construction uh, industry. Of course, all the other sectors, uh, they face the same challenges. Okay. And, um, you know, what, what would your message be then to your future and your present customers in the country and the region? Um, like you've, you've talked about various factors affecting your business and the economy in general. So what would you like to tell your um, present future customers about what you expect for this year then? First, it is not to tell them uh, what we expect, but it is to about listening to them what they expect from us. Mm. Uh, because um, we need to adapt uh, our business to their needs. So we've talked about high-rise buildings, we've talked about roads, we've talked about dams. Uh, so all those um, um, uh, segments, uh, we need to understand uh, customers' needs so that we can adapt the product range, we can adapt our services uh, in order to serve them better. So it is more us listening to them than the opposite. Than the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sadiq, for talking to us today on The Trading Bell and, of course, giving us your thoughts on a range of topics as well as key factors around Bamburi cement. Thank you. Well, on that note, we're going to take a look now at 